welcome back to another edition of Home Inspection Bites, where we're taking the high road to give you the high ground advantage in your home inspection career. I'm your host, Derek Pomaville. You know, students frequently ask me in class about general liability and errors and emissions insurance for home inspectors. How much does it cost? Where do I go to get it? How does that stuff work? Well, I'm not a licensed insurance agent anymore, and it's really tough for me to answer those questions. So at Home Inspection Bites, we've sought out an industry expert. His name is Aaron Menlove. He's with Inspector Pro Insurance. He's been helping home inspectors get their errors and emissions and liability insurance for nine, almost ten years now. And he's our industry expert, and he's going to answer all of your questions today. And remember, if you like what you're seeing on the Home Inspection Bites YouTube channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications icon, because when we get to 500 subscribers, we're giving away a free basic Home Inspector Toolkit. So let's get started with that interview. Well, welcome to Home Inspection Bites, Aaron. It's good to have you. Uh, Aaron Menlove, did I get that right? That is correct, yes. How long have you been helping home inspectors find errors and emissions and liability insurance? I've been in this industry for uh, nine, ten years now. Uh, Nine or ten years, wow. Yes, yes. And I guess over those years, you've probably heard a lot of interesting stories from home inspectors, haven't you? We, uh, we, we've heard it all, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish we had more time on this interview, but we don't. We're going to have to get you back on here to share some of those crazy stories. Why is it important, first of all, for a home inspector to have liability insurance? There's general liability insurance, which is for accidents on the job site, and errors mm -hmm. and emissions coverage or professional coverage, which is your report that you put together. Okay. Right. So you want to have both of them. And the reason is, is that if and when a problem comes up, you want to have coverage on these issues when they arise. Okay. So you would like to have coverage on both of these, both sides. You have the errors and emissions coverage and the general liability. It's a good idea to have coverage on both of them. The reason being, if somebody is upset with you or you have an accident or something happens, you want to have coverage on these issues rather than not. Okay. So basically the general liability is for, you know, something like you, you, you make a, uh, you have some kind of accident, maybe you drop your ladder and damage the hood of a car. Would that be yep, a good Yep. Your idea? ladder falls over and damages the, the Ferrari in the garage. Um, you, uh, you turn on the, the tub and you run down so doing something else and you come back and it's flooded everywhere, right? <laughs> um, so that's, that's general liability. Errors and emissions is more about uh, six months after the inspection. Mrs. Smith is calling you and her brother-in-law is an attorney up on the roof and you did a bad inspection on that roof and you owe him $20,000. That's, uh, that's an errors and emissions issue. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of new construction inspections, and contractors hate us when we come on a new construction site to inspect a brand new house. They always want us to show proof of insurance. Do we have to show that proof of insurance to anybody who asks for it? Not necessarily. If it's a builder, you're going to want to show it, and it's common in the industry for them to require that of you. If you're mm -hmm. the owner of commercial property or apartment complexes or a builder, you want to make sure that anybody coming on your property has coverage for this rather than themselves and their own insurance right if you right. if you're in there doing an inspection and you're you know your hammer hit the little kid walking by you want to make sure that the inspector's insurance is covering for that and not not their their own insurance so that's common we do that free of charge on our insurance so it's not on our side it's very easy to do it's not costing us anything or you anything to do this right so right. Right. as far as regular homeowners uh, that type of stuff or other groups asking for proof of insurance that gets in a little bit more where we can do that, but it may raise some other issues about why are they asking for this proof of insurance, right? But you do have coverage for right. these types of situations or they, they do see. have coverage on a certificate, yes. It's probably a good idea maybe just to carry that, uh, that deck page with you, that proof of coverage, just in case. You can do that. Yeah, you have a proof of insurance. Our clients all have a, you know, a declaration or a proof of insurance form that they can carry with them, right? A lot of times right. they won't carry the, the, you know, the paper itself, but they'll have an electronic right. format, right? Yeah, so. you got to love the digital age. You know, you can pretty much scan anything and just keep it on your phone, right? Makes it real easy. Real easy, yeah, yes. From your experience in, you know, nine or ten years uh, at providing, you know, and helping home inspectors find this stuff, uh, the you know insurance, you've probably dealt with quite a few claims. What would you say are the most expensive claims that uh, commonly come across your desk? The, the most expensive stuff we do see, you could see stuff where people didn't like the inspection that you did. And, and maybe there's something that's small that you left out of the report, right, that they didn't agree with. And then they right. may have buyer's remorse on the property. Hey, you know, Derek, you own the house now. Uh, you didn't tell me about the, the, the problem, the caulking in this section of the house. And so their claim will be trying to get you to purchase the whole purchase price of the house, right? So that's right, out right. there as a possibility. 
or it could be, you know what, we need five or 10,000 bucks to, to fix this issue that you missed. Right. So you can Got see it. different sides of it, but uh, yeah, water penetration is by far the largest section of our, our issues that we deal with. You know, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm speculating here, you know, so I, you know, I'd like your thoughts on this one because, you know, back when I started doing home inspections, it was 1994, there were no licensing laws. And there were maybe two companies that would offer errors and emissions insurance for home inspectors, and it cost thousands of dollars a year. And I remember other home inspectors telling me, well, you're going to get sued once or twice a year. That's just the nature of the job. And I remember thinking, wow, I don't want to get into that. You know, so, you know, I got into the whole risk management, you know, uh, uh, exercise, you know, what my instructor told me years ago about how to avoid those kind of things. Thankfully, I've never been sued. Um, so do you think that lawsuits have gone down now because there's more providers and more home inspectors are carrying errors and emissions insurance? I don't necessarily think that lawsuits have become less prevalent or have gone down. I do think uh, seeing the policy plans that were in the industry 10 years ago versus what we have now, uh -huh. that they're much more efficient. They're much better and uh, I would suggest better tied to the inspection world. So you have a better, much better plan now than you did in the past as far as the efficiency dealing with the claim and helping make these problems go away. And, and when, I, when I discuss this, it's more about frivolous issues. Well, how does that look? Describe how that pre-claims assistance works because you know I've seen your website, I've seen your materials, and uh, uh, this pre-claims assistance sounds like a pretty good deal. Can you just describe for the viewers how that works? So Derek, you're my, uh, you're my insured and I'm your agent and you've done an inspection for Mr. Jones and six months later, He's uh, got his brother-in-law on the roof, and they're complaining about uh, that you missed some issues on the roof. You go back to your report first thing, and you're looking at it, and it had another 15 years on the life cycle on the shingles, and right. you couldn't see anything in particular. It was functional at the time, and that's what you put in your report, right? So you've gone back to talk to Mr. Jones, and you say, hey, you know what, Mr. Jones, I did a basic, you know, a good inspection. The shingles had this life cycle based on SOP. I did a professional inspection. This is what my report shows. And he's just not believing you. He thinks that you're trying to hide something there, right? Yeah. This is yeah. what's going through his mind. And the inspector just trying to hide something. His brother-in-law is an attorney and they heard that their neighbor down the road got a new roof because their inspector missed something. So this is the, what the word is on the street is for them as well, right? Uh -huh. In that situation, you're going to call me. I'm going to go ahead and get the information from you. I'll say, Derek, what are we dealing with here? How long ago was the inspection? His name is Mr. Jones. What's his complaint about the roof? I'm going to send this information off to the adjusters for you. So my adjusters that I work with, this pre-claim service, professional outfit, capital claims are very good. I'll be sending their information, uh, them information about your policy and your complaint. They have access to your policy. Within a day, they'll be sending you an email. Derek, we got this information. Send us a copy of the report. Send us your pre-inspection agreement. You got signed prior to the agreement, right? Right. And they're going to be in touch with you within a couple days after that, working with you to help respond to Mr. Jones, right? And okay. that's what pre-claim assistance is. Most people, um, myself included, you know, we tend to think in terms of anytime you talk to the insurance company about something that might have gone wrong, your rates are definitely going to go up. So how does that pre-claims the system affect uh, the uh, assistance rather? How does that affect the policy? Does it change the rates because you've got three or four phone calls into your adjuster this year? No, it doesn't. And that's another reason that we like to have this so that inspectors will come tell their insurance and tell me about issues. We, we don't want as an insurance provider to have issues that are mesticizing or be turning cancerous as far as going to be turning into big claims when they could have been handled in a much even more efficient manner, manner early on, right? Okay. So in that type of a situation, the underwriter will look at it on renewal time and, oh, Derek had a couple calls or this an issue with smaller stuff. We almost expect that. I have okay. some bigger accounts right now that uh, may have high revenues. And if I don't hear anything from them the whole year long, as far as some of these issues, I'm asking them, come on, you guys, you had to have somebody give you a hard time. <laughs> you met some crazy people out there. You can't do a thousand inspections and not meet some crazy folks out there. It's impossible, right? right? I yeah. know that's what's going on, right? So oh, yeah. come yeah. and tell and, me about it. It's not going to raise your rates. It's not going to hurt you. We're going to be great on renewal time, right? It's the, right. And, 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 and by doing that, I'm encouraging guys to be able to come and tell me these issues. And that's what we want. 
we want. And it sounds, I, it, it sounds to me, I'm sorry, uh, Aaron, but it sounds to me like it's mutually beneficial. Because oh, the yeah. way your claims go down, uh, and you're coaching the home inspector on how to deal with these kind of issues, so it's kind of a win-win is what it sounds like. It, it is a win-win. It's, it's a situation where something, if it's hidden, if it's not brought about, can turn into six months into a, a big claim or an issue. Can't, it met, metastasizes a cancerous issue, right? Sure. And it right. was all because it wasn't handled efficiently early on, right? If we right. can get ahead of the game and get on top of these early, and, and, and by doing this pre-claim of service, it's just, it's a real benefit for us and for the inspector. And so being in the industry, specializing in this, having these types of plans, it makes it so inspectors are going to talk to their insurance and feel good about having that type of insurance rather than sitting at home boy, do I want to talk to my insurance yet? I don't know. It's, uh, I, what's it going to cost yeah. me? What's it going to do to my I, renewal rate? So on and so forth. I, I had many a night like that early in my career, just sitting around, oh boy, do I call the insurance company on this one? You know, how do I deal with this? You know, like yeah. I said, I got a couple of interesting stories. You know, maybe we can swap those in another interview. But, you know, I also remember in your materials, uh, I read uh, on the website or maybe some of the, the materials that you sent me that you found, uh, your company has found that 80% of the claims are meritless. In other words, the, the home inspector really didn't do anything wrong. So how can a, a home inspector, you know, avoid some of these things more proactively? If you could on your report, definitely put in the summary, you know, when they're walking around with you to look at it and talk about it after, have a good time to discuss and make it personable make yourself uh, so that they can understand this, right? Um, right. And, and I guess just have a, take the time to deal with someone, take uh, a good time as far as looking at an inspection for a full inspection. Don't rush that inspection, right? If it's right. gonna be you know, two, three, four hours, take the time, do a good inspection, spend your time there. You're not rushing to get that uh, you know, three or four or five inspections in one day. That's not beneficial to you especially if you're rushing through and not catching stuff that the, the homeowner is going to want to see. They don't want to feel like they're getting left out or cheated out of a full inspection, right? Or the service right. that they're paying you for. So take the time to do a full inspection. Um, I, and it, the most of it is, um, you know what? Uh, the, looking at the inspection agreement and they're signing stuff. If you get a bad feeling about someone, take some time to maybe sit and think about stuff. If they're uh, looking at your agreement and crossing off with a red pen that they don't agree with this or that, there are some red flags in the industry to watch out for certain clients, right? right. If you have right. trouble, we're dealing with someone prior to the, your inspection, don't think that your inspection after that is going to be something that's going to be nice and neat and efficient and great because the same you know, complaints that they have prior to or their attitude prior to your inspection is going to be how they're going to treat your inspection after and complaints about it after, okay? Right, right. So, I have a lot of guys, inspectors that, uh, you know what, I did this inspection and I never should have done it. The guy was crossing off this and uh, he had his red <laughs> pen and he didn't agree with that yeah. on the report and my standard uh, pre-inspection agreement with limitation of liability language. And that could be an issue that maybe you want to double check and see if that's an inspection you want to do if they're that type of folks you're going to be dealing with, right? Right. Yeah, and that's it's very tempting, you know, to just go ahead with the inspection, you know, because you're staring down a four hundred and fifty dollar paycheck that's immediate, right? You know, right. and it's 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 very tempting to stick with that, even though there's something in the back of your head saying, yeah, there's some red flags here, you know, you could be yeah. literally buying a claim, you know, so your your spidey sense, uh, count on it and use it, and it will save you. Um, obviously, us too, it's going to save you the hassle of having to deal with these folks, and the the five hundred bucks is not worth it. So, yeah. So, okay, well, a couple more things. I mean, that's some really good advice, you know, and that's, that's actually very much along the line of, you know, what I've been teaching students for years. So it's great to get that consistency and a message from someone else in a related industry. That's awesome. So you also uh, put down on your, your, uh, your materials that you have uh, full drone liability coverage and infrared. Let's talk about those for a minute. If you could explain what those are, I'd appreciate it. The bigger issue with the drone is that, I mean, does this thing go out of control hits a good wind and the grandma's walking on the sidewalk uh, in front of the house and it hits her in the face, right? And now yeah, she can't yeah. see so good, right? <laughs> so this is your real concern with the drone is that the damage that the drone could cause to somebody that's, you know, somewhat fragile or, you know, in this type of a situation, right? We do offer equipment coverage in our policy where you can get the actual drone, you know, if it was stolen or broken or something of that nature to replace as well, okay? okay and this so is other equipment, whether it's, laptops or uh, you know radon cameras 
or, uh, you know, energy audit cameras, this type of thing. Yeah. Okay. So the drones, you can get coverage to fix or repair the drone should it get damaged. There's also stolen. Yep. Yeah. Stolen, right. And, but there's also coverage in case the drone causes damage. Yes, yes. Okay. So there's two types of drone coverage there. And as far as energy audit uh, coverage, right, you, that's, that's uh, on the policy. It's, it's uh, infrared services, right? It's part of the policy standard, right? So it comes with a policy. It's not an endorsement you're purchasing separate. It comes with the policy on the, you know, as far as automatic coverage. Right, right. How much does E&O insurance cost me every year? Well, it's, it depends on the state you're in. It depends on how much revenue you're going to plan on doing. It depends on uh, what type of policy you're getting, e and general liability. Um, I would suggest the, the average policy with a good pre-claim assistance group on a broad-based policy, right? Uh, uh -huh. Maybe close to a million-dollar plan, e and and GL. You're maybe close to 1900 to 2000 a year. Okay. You can get stuff closer to fifteen or thirteen hundred if you went down on a lower limit, right? Now this wow. is on a good plan with pre-claim assistance, with me as your agent taking care of stuff, you know, <laughs> being your agent and knowing that on a good plan, right? right? You can certainly do cheaper plans than that, right? Or more expensive. The more expensive, there's no value there. There's nothing you're getting special there, right? But the cheaper ones, what you start doing is you're cutting out coverage, whether it's going to have, uh, the, the policy is not going to have, it's going to have split limits. You're not going to have combined limits, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they're not going to have a, a pre-claim assistance. Some of them advertise as such, but it's a, a real good pre-claim service, right? Because that makes all the difference in the world. Um, is it going to have, uh, you know, th the right deductibles or deductible waivers that you want to see, right? And right. is the policy right. a broad base or a good policy that you're going to want to have coverage on? All policies are not the same in their definition right. and descriptions of coverage, right? So all these right. will change a little bit there. But yeah, I mean, from what, 13 to 2000 is the average plan, depending on which coverage with a good plan with pre-claim assistance. Um, and that's both errors and emissions and general liability. And that'll go up and down a little bit depending on, you know, New Jersey versus uh, Idaho, right? Sure. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. 20 years ago, I was spending seven grand a year on uh, errors and emissions insurance and you know I'm trying to tell students it's come down quite a bit for most you know since then but I, I always have to stop short of saying about here's how much it's going to cost so thank you so much for kind of giving us that ballpark. So Aaron those are some phenomenal responses this is great information I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on here and spending time with us today. Appreciate that Derek and I've uh, enjoyed this very much. Well, thanks. So have I. And uh, look forward to speaking to you again. Well, that was great talking with Aaron. And if you guys like what you saw and you've got some ideas for future videos, let us know in the comments section below. And we'll try to cover them as soon as we can. Thanks again for watching.